Take a moment to count your blessings. This is Wretched Radio. Whilst looking at that amazing hymn, In So Lord Jesus, Quickly Come, great melody, great lyrics, lofty, high. I looked over on the side of the YouTube machine for other songs that are related. Sister Act 2 was on the list, and I'm practicing enough self-control that I'm not going to play it. So count your blessings. Thank you. Sist- Sister Act 2, because yeah. there are so many unanswered questions from Sister Act 1. <laughs> is, that, is that the one where supposedly Whoopi Goldberg yeah. kind of yeah. was a little bit inappropriate Nunnish. with Doogie Howser? Yeah. Well, what's good for the Brett Kavanaugh isn't good for the Whoopi Goldberg. That saying you can take to the bank. However, a clip that I do believe will encourage you. This was when I was in, did I mention I was in California? Heard that Over the somewhere. last five days? Yeah. Which is why, wow, I'm telling you, I have been drinking a ton of water. Dry? Woo! That California, that high desert, it really, you understand why those flames and those fires can travel so fast. You combine that, basically the whole state is Kindle, and then you combine it with those Santa Ana winds. And I'm telling you, you've got a recipe for what we're seeing on the news these days. Al Mohler doing what Al Mohler does. He was, was recording the briefing, his radio podcast, and it was the day when he just answers questions from folks. And somebody asked him a very important question, a question that will be confronting the Southern Baptist Convention. In fact, I'm no prophet. I don't even play one on TV, but I'm going to make a prediction that we are going to see a battle in the Southern Baptist Convention over the role of women in the church. Why do I say that? Because that's always been the battle. Liberalism always starts with the women's issue because it is the easiest issue to get compromised. And it just is because, well, half of your audience, if you will, they kind of like the idea. They, 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 They maybe haven't understood the beauty of the roles that God has assigned to us that we do certain things better as male and female. And he's assigned our gender and he's designed our basic roles. There's all kinds of diversity in that. But his plan was absolutely brilliant when he decided, men, you play this role. Ladies, you play that role. And a lot of women just don't like it. And that is why Protestants, I can't think of a denomination that has gone wonky. Episcopalian, it was... Before V. Jean Robinson, the practicing homosexual bishop, there there was, uh, was it Catherine Jeffords? Who came first? Was it V. Jean? V. Jean. V. Jean came first? And then the yeah. woman? I'll bet there was a woman before V. Jean. I'll just bet. Unless they, okay. they really swung for the rafters with that. But I think in the ELCA we saw that, Presbyterian Church America. It's always the woman's issue. And I don't think the Southern Baptist Convention is going to be exempt from it. The signs are there. At the last Southern Baptist Convention, they talked about having a president be a woman of the Southern Baptist Convention. The president of the SBC, the current one, it's two-year term, I believe, J.D. Greer, says he's a complementarian, but he said, hey, I think it'd be kind of groovy if a woman were the president of the SBC. So now we see that there's signs, there's people of differing opinions in leadership roles and so people have been asking, wonder where Al Mohler is at on this. Here's, here's the challenge for Dr. Albert Mohler. He's Southern Baptist, and he is, he is a man. You've got to appreciate this. He loves his Southern Baptist Convention, and he doesn't want to see it harmed. There's also a rule in the Southern Baptist Convention that you don't criticize anybody who's Southern Baptist. That is almost rule number one in the SBC. Don't be publicly critical of anyone. Deal with it privately if you're going to deal with it at all. And so when asked the question, what do you think about the idea of a woman being the president of the SBC? Understandably, Al Mohler wasn't his, you know, typically, you know, he just zip there, you know, bing, there it is. That's where it is. I, I think he was being a little bit more diplomatic in light of the fact that people inside of the SBC, including the president, disagree with him. The good news is it was clear enough. Al Mohler, he's he's not all about 
a woman becoming a president of the SBC. From Amarillo, Texas, Alan, uh, what is your understanding of the correct biblical position with regard to the potential nomination of a woman as leader of the Southern Baptist Convention? Uh, wow. Uh, as leader, I'm going to assume that means as president of the Southern Baptist Convention. I All right. Why did Al say wow? He knows exactly what he thinks. <laughs> he, he knows what he thinks about everything. He's, he's not slow to give an answer to a question. And that, again, I, I'm, I'm not faulting him for that at all. I get it. He's trying to be diplomatic considering the potential conflict. I'll tell you, okay, okay. All right, I'm just going to repent right now of what I'm about to say. But here it comes anyway. The SBC is sort of like the state of California about a month ago. It was it was becoming increasingly volatile. It wasn't ready to be set on fire like we've been seeing recently in the last few days, but it was getting there. And that's, I think, where the SBC is. And Al Mohler is trying to tamp down some of those flames. I repent for that. I think that's, uh, that's probably what is meant here. And uh, there's been some talk uh, about that. So... Uh, I, I wasn't plotting and planning to answer that question publicly in November of, of 2018. I, I answered it in a big public setting in one way uh, when uh, we were at the Southern Baptist Convention uh, this, this past uh, summer in Dallas. I'm going to answer it exactly the same way. As a business meeting, there's absolutely no reason that a woman couldn't be president of the Southern Baptist Convention. If, if, if that's the responsibility, the appointment of committees and the, uh, the appointment and nominations, uh, there's no reason that can't be fulfilled by a woman. And uh, if that's the responsibility of the president of the Southern Baptist Convention, then, uh, then there's no reason a woman should not do it. Uh, I, I simply want to say, however, I don't think that's the most important responsibility functionally of the president of the Southern Baptist Convention. That's the reason why that president's generally been a pastor. And so without apology, holding to a biblical understanding of, of the teaching office and pastoral responsibility in the church. Uh, if, if the president of the Southern Baptist Convention is someone who is a pastor or who uh, is, is, uh, is functioning in a pastor context or in, in, in the preaching and teaching context of the word, then, uh, then that's going to be a man. And uh, that is one of the most important responsibilities of the president of the Southern Baptist Convention. It's to preach. And so, you know, the convention is legally only two days a year. That leaves over 360 days when other things need to be done by the president. What the president generally does is go and preach. And, uh, and so if, let me put it this way, I want to answer it very carefully. This is not at all to uh, denigrate or fail to respect the gifts and abilities of women, but that's just true in the local church as well, where we talk about the teaching office and make that distinction and complementarianism and our understanding of the right ordering of the church by the word. Uh, according to, to God's intention and to his glory. Um, and so in the Southern Baptist Convention, we have the same issue. And so in a local church, there's probably no reason why a woman couldn't appoint committees uh, you know, or, do, or do any. I mean, the executive function is not what's at, at stake here. Uh, it's the pastoral function and the teaching office. And I think functionally and practically, there's no way to separate those well uh, or easily in the Southern Baptist Convention. Not as forthright as he typically is. Nevertheless, I believe coming down on the right side of the line, Dr. Albert Moeller saying, no, not, a, not about that. But watch. This could be, in two years, a major issue. I believe the SBC meeting is going to be in California, which means... A lot of Californians will be at that meeting, which means a vote could go in a left part of the country sort of way, if you know what I'm saying. I hope not. Be praying for your Southern Baptist Convention if you're in it. And let's hope that they don't go the way of the Luterns and the Presbyterians and the Anglicans and, well, pretty much everybody that's mainline pro Methodists. Let's, let's hope not. Prediction Number two, specifically for the SBC, I don't think it's going to be as big of a division as the role of women issue is going to be. If a woman were nominated the president of the SBC, you can only imagine the fallout from that. What percentage would just leave the SBC? It would be, a, it would be an earthquake. 
is what is what it would be. But I predict there's going to be another mm, conflict that brews and divides, and that is the political one. Increasingly seeing people trying to promote other issues besides life as the litmus test issue, social justice concerns, for instance. So it's okay to vote liberal because so those racial reconciliation, et cetera, that's more important than the life issue. And that is going to be another challenge for the SBC. And just as an aside, my buddy Josh Elsom, citing Matthew 10, 21, Jesus didn't come to bring peace but a sword, brother against brother, mother against daughter, etc. According to Jesus, division should happen because of him. Increasingly these days in evangelical Christianity, what are we seeing division caused by? Politics. That ought not to be. This is Wretched Radio. 